Don't with Sports Talk Worldwide with some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Now check it out. We had to fight with the black bald boxer. You know my boy Taz, I like to call him. Guillermo Rigandau, 38-year-old dude, won the fight, beat Chea over the weekend. And, uh, you know, uh, it was a little controversy at the end because he hit old boy with a left hook in round eight. Right? Nice left hook. But the boy got up early and was, you know, you know, hey, whatever referee was saying he was doing. So there's room for argument here. Right? He could have got up. But as I was saying in that first video uh, about this, about the win, is, you know, there's another side of that. You know, the Adana Stevensons and the other Salamos of the world and others. So, therefore, you have that other element. And so you're thinking about, hmm, you've been taking a lot of blows the whole fight. We might not want to put him back, back in this with Guillermo right now when he's groggy. Right? So that's the argument with that. And uh, so the WBC president, he says he's going to consider their protests. The fight's going to be protested now, Che aside, why not? Go protest it. Uh, but the WBC will at least acknowledge it and consider it. But he himself even said, that's like exactly what I'm saying. He's like, we are trying to avoid, you know, tragedies. You know what I mean? We're, we're trying to avoid tragedies. Man, so those that's the other argument. Now, I know, you know, these outrage. You know, my point about this is, of course, people, you know, Guillermo Rigaldao is 38 years old, you know, been blackballed, basically. Anybody do their research or just a little bit, right? Find out, man, shoot, what? You know, we want him to win. You know what I mean? You know, it should, you shouldn't have been in there in the first place. Whatever. You got knocked down. You got up on time. We can move on. Anyway, you know what I mean? But it ain't like that. So the protest. You know, and there's enough people. When you get a protest, there's enough people upset about it, right? You know, I saw that with Pacquiao Bradley. Enough people upset about it. it had to happen. Seen it by Ward Kovalev. Enough people upset about it. It's got to happen. You know what I mean? And it's a lot of other people. Things that just happen. Breaking down beats down there. You know, well, hey, look, hey, you get out because you beat him. What's wrong with you for beating the guy we said was number one pound for pound? None of that happens. So, you know, and then Rigo goes up and fights. Your boy Lomachenko loses the fight, but takes his 122-pound uh, belt, even though he went up two weight divisions. It's all documented. We talk about it all the time. But, you know, where is the outrage? You know, is, is the, you know where what, what's up with that, right, when it happens to Rigo? Nobody cares. You know, it is outrage. You know, if you're going to outrage every little thing, like when, you know, the referee getting in the way, there's a lot of fights where the referee, we kind of hmm, look at that referee a little funny. Now, I'm going to tell you somebody that you probably won't be thinking about. It's a heavyweight, Joseph Parker. Heavyweight. Y'all going to be hearing more about him soon because that's the dude who beat Andy Ruiz Jr. People going to start catching that. Wait, wait. He beat Andy Ruiz Jr. Start looking at him and find out why. Well, Joseph Parker, if you're looking at referees, Right? You, you, you're upset about what referees might have did in a fight, and you could have did this if the referee wouldn't have done that, or you could have did that if the referee would have been a little bit different. Joseph Parker, he's living that. He's fighting against Anthony Joshua. The referee couldn't even speak English. I say it all the time, but he couldn't speak English. He couldn't say nothing but break. Who gets a referee in England with two English-speaking fighters that can't speak English? Why do you do that? The man can say break. I can't say nothing to the guys. Now, I know I say this often for y'all that be here every now and then, right? But I'm just saying, isn't that just outlandish? And it's not even a renowned referee where it's like, whoa, man, we got to get him. We don't care what he speak, right? No, it's what, why? The championship level referee that can't speak English. English is a prerequisite for whatever, right? That happens. Joseph Parker was a part of that. He wasn't allowed to fight in the end fighting. Other than Ruiz, who wants to get inside there and going to take a few punches because his arms are shorter. He's been doing it for years. Parker faints his way in, faints his way in, comes in and get out quick. His quickness and looseness, those are his attributes. So when you can't never get close to somebody at all, ever, then that takes that away in that Joshua fight. And in the Dillian White fight, he was just fouled forever. He was being fouled constantly with the head, with a, whatever. Right. And it should have been something to have Dylan White at least understand you can't, you know, just cheat. I mean, you're trying to roughhouse him. Of course, that would be a good tactic. 
but it has to be in within the realm of, of the rules. And that wasn't in that case. So he could have been deducted and a knockdown was count for Joseph Parker. That wasn't one. It was due to one of those headbutts we talked about. So Joseph Parker can be upset about stuff like that, a referee. I think that, you know, bottom line is Rigan Dow was in the fight, was in a good fight, went in the fight. He lost his damn mind trying to be in that fight like that anyway. But whatever. It brings me to my point of if they want to rematch this chair, rematch, right? I know you can get old overnight. That can happen. It's going to happen to Rigan Dow too, right? It's 38. And some people want to say Cubans. It could be older than that. But let me tell you something. Y'all will mess around and get Chair hurt. That's what's going to happen. Y'all better mess around, get that boy hurt, right? Because my my uh, opinion about the fight, what Rigondeaux would have to do, you know, my advice would just be simply outclass his ass. Simply as that. Outclass his ass, right? Nothing against Chair. If Chair comes in here and Rigondeaux fights how he can, and stop worrying about what these people who don't care about him anyway think and just continue to win, right? You with Al Heyman now, they'll figure something out, right? Just continue to win. You don't got to go in there. Now, they think that he's good. They think he's on your level because you fought in the phone booth and you didn't have to, right? Because you got more talent than that. So what you do is you just do show all your talent and handle your business in the next fight against Tia. Roberto Duran and Sugar Ray Leonard too, is a perfect example of that. You got to bring it up again. Yeah. Well, I lost the first fight fighting your style for the crowd and everything and pride or whatever and try to get rounds in and all that stuff. But I could do this. And now I'm going to. That's what needs to happen in that second fight. So let's see what's up with this um, protest. If it's upheld or not. I really doubt it. Right. But let's see if Chad can go in and, and win a couple of fights or two. Maybe they can meet down the road. Let's see what happens going forward. Doing sports talk worldwide. And I'm about to hear y'all.